it's Serene, and today I have a special guest, my friend, she who shall not be named. What's up, nerds? You're dumb. Thanks. <laughs> and today, we, together, both of us, in union, will be talking about trash creepy pastas and also trash 13-year-olds, because 13-year-olds suck. They both suck a lot. We hate 13-year-olds. If you are 13, leave, unsubscribe, and don't talk to me. You're not allowed. You are not wanted here. If you're 12, you're on thin ice. And if you're 14, you're kind of in the clear. Just don't be cringy. Don't do dumb. And if you're 11, you're too young for this video, so ciao. So get out. <laughs> Hasta la vista, loser. <laughs> so we have divided just a few of the most popular creepy pastas into two categories yuck and yum it's self-explanatory we're gonna start with yuck because dessert is always last all right so first up we have the probably one of the most famous creepy pastas i'd say it's one of the two most famous jeff the killer the cult classic Oh boy. Okay. It's, it's dumb. This story is dumb, but we're gonna walk you through it. Okay, it's kind of one of those stories where it's like, everyone read it at some point, and I guess everyone at the same time had like that rose-tinged like nostalgia where they're like, oh, it was so cool. It wasn't. It, it sucks. Trust me, go back and read it. It sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like literally a 12-year-old wrote it, or a 13-year-old, which is why 13-year-olds aren't allowed. Leave. <laughs> you caused this mess. <laughs> All right, so we started reading, and you know, it starts off with this basically what is like an interview slash news story about Jeff the Killer, and boy oh boy does this interview just i mean wow okay this just, is really realistic just read, read the quote <laughs> okay so we read this the figure stood there watching me finally after what seemed like forever he said it a simple phrase but said in a way only a madman could speak you want to know how i got these scars <laughs> <laughs> We're so dumb. End story. That is the entire Jeff the Killer story. <laughs> it's surprise, he's secretly the Joker, and he's actually a good killer. The only relevant. So, his brother is Liu. That's right, Liu. L-I-U. And when we looked this up to see if it was a real name, we got Long Island University. <laughs> Literally, like, not a name in another language with some weird meaning, or like... A weird, like, nickname. No, it's just Long Island University. This name came from nowhere. It's completely made up. These white people be wildin'. <laughs> Basically, what happens is Jeff and Leo and their parents move to this fancy new neighborhood after their dad gets a promotion, which... Weird flex, but okay. Um, and then... They, they go to the bus stop for school and it's it's never clear like it's never clarified how old Jeff and Liu are but they kind of refer to like like one of the little kids in the neighborhood is gonna have a party at some point and like just the way they refer to the other kids m makes it seem like they're older like 15 16 or something like that but so they're at the bus stop and these 12 year olds they're actually described as 12 year olds in the story pull up on skateboards and start bullying them. They pull knives on these They can't even, these like, kids. drive. Like, I'm sure that's a liability. Like, you skate and you fall down, you stab your thigh with the knife, but whatever. <laughs> it's like 12-year-olds pull up on skateboards, pull out knives on these, like, I'm assuming a 16-year-old. It could be a 12-year-old. I don't know. Sir, your car is killing the environment. Could you not? Like, my gosh, it's like the roars of Satan. Souls of the innocent. That's what he uses for gas. <laughs> Oops. Whoop. Gosh, that's uh, so loud. It is. It's really loud. I'm so sorry. It's like every time I try and record a video, either like a trash truck comes by, some idiot decides he wants to kill the environment. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. There's an emergency. They can hold it for later. Whatever. I don't know. Someone starts dying and the ambulance yeah. goes by. So. Anyway. Yeah. So basically, they kind of get in a fight. Um, Liu gets arrested. And as a truce, the uh, family of the 12-year-olds invites Jeff to a party. And Jeff's parents make him go. Because that's right. Take your kids to the party of the bullies. The 12-year-old bullies. When you are 16. It's it's so weird. And, like, there's a bit in this story where they're dressed up really fancy, I guess, because it's a fancy neighborhood, so it's a fancy rich person party. But Jeff just dresses in, like, jeans and a hoodie. Like, his icon- his iconic outfit, basically, is what he dresses up in. Because he's and different like, from other girls. <laughs> his parents get mad at him, and there's a line about his how his mother resists the urge to yell at him and just smiles at him for wearing a hoodie. Like, it's a little kid's birthday party. Chill. Yeah. <sighs> so, basically, they get in a fight. Some things happen. We'll go over what happens in a second. Because, um, it's- uh... it's wild. It's, it's wacky. Real, it's real wild. But y'all. long story short, the twelve year olds pour vodka and bleach on him and set him on fire. And that magically makes his hair black, his eyes black, and his skin pale white. So naturally he goes to the hospital, a few days later comes back, goes absolutely crazy. He goes absolutely nuts, y'all. And the funny thing is is it's not like it's not an out of nowhere three thing because like throughout the story it's like Jeff gets this weird feeling Jeff gets this strange feeling but he doesn't say anything Jeff acts really creepy and weird but his parents shrug it off and it's just like you you can tell like this kid is like he, he already had kind of like psychopath tendencies like there was something going on before like just yeah It's not very subtle, but it is there. So he goes home and decides that he is getting tired, but he wants to look at his new white face. So he burns off his eyelids so he doesn't go to sleep. And then he's like, oh, I'm I'm too, I can't smile at my new face anymore. And it's so pretty. So he carves a smile into his face. He's like, you know what? It hurts to keep smiling. So you know what's going to hurt less? Carving a smile into my face so the muscles don't have to hurt. He's like a great value joker. That's literally what he is. Only, it, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. It is. Anyway, it's now we're just dumb. gonna read through our favorite things. Yeah, we're, that get, we're gonna in the story. We're gonna go back to like the whole twelve-year-olds at the party bit because that was real whack, and we're about to explain why. So one, twelve-year-olds pulling knives. Wild, whack. On sixteen-year-olds. Why do you give your twelve-year-old like, a knife? I don't know if you've seen like the difference between a twelve-year-old and a sixteen-year-old, because twelve-year-olds generally haven't hit puberty yet, but it's pretty different. So it'd be like if a little three-year-old came up to you and was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna stab you." You'd be like, "That's cute. I bet you are, baby. You're so cute." They're like little chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two. When. You have your skin and hair with bleach and vodka and you're set on fire. You don't, your skin doesn't turn white. You don't turn into a vampire. Your hair doesn't turn black. What happens is your skin disintegrates. It dissolves. It literally dissolves. Your hair burns off. So you're now this bald, skinless monstrosity. (laughs) You're an abomination. (laughs) Sounds like a plucked chicken. You're a plug chicken and a corpse. You are a freak of nature and you are dead. If, if you survive, you're not going to be able to move properly ever. Like, you're not ever going to heal. You're going to have scars and, like, you're just... It's going to be, like, the rest of your life. You won't be able to be a person. And when he when he gets the bleach poured on him, it literally says that he tries to wipe it off. Like, tries to keep it from getting in his eyes. Like, he tries to wipe it off his eyes. Which means that if you get bleach in your eyes, you can't see. You're blind. You're blind. Four your life. eyes are gone. <laughs> For life. It's not a it's not a permanent issue. Um, next thing. Twelve year olds pulling guns. Yes. Because that's logical. Twelve year olds pulling guns and going to this little kid's birthday party 
to shoot up a 16 year old I'm guessing they never specify Jeff's age we just assume that he's 16 because of the way that he talks about these 12 year olds but we don't know for sure uh, so that rolls right around to the next point 12 year olds kicking a 16 year olds butt <laughs> how, how does this happen granted the first time they fought Jeff absolutely kicked their butts like they they had not a chance. One of them got stabbed. One of their wrists got broken. But, 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 how do you follow this up? And like, like having a gun doesn't automatically give you super strength. How are you automatically just? Oh, I came back for revenge, so now I can kick your butt. That's how that works. Totally. I'm done. I'm done. That's it. It's time to show them all. <laughs> no more, Mister Nice Middle Schooler. <laughs> Um, oh, and then the main 12-year-old, the ringleader, his name is, like, Randall. I don't Randy. know. Randy. Randall. I'm going to call him Door Handle because that's about how useless <laughs> he is. Oof. <laughs> Man. Uh, but anyway, Door Handle starts acting in, like, a 30-year-old villain mastermind. Just in the way that he talks. Like, he has this whole spiel about, like, yeah, come at me, Jeff. Like, I'm the one who got your brother sent to Juvie because he was trying to help you. He got your name cleared, and now he's in jail because of you, but it's really because of me. Are you not going to fight me? You're a coward, and you should be ashamed of yourself because you let your brother go to jail. Like, where, where does this kid come up with this stuff? What? I assume the same place he gets his guns. Yeah, and in, in response to this... Jeff, as one does, in one punch, stops this 12-year-old's heart. He stops his heart just by punching him in the ribs. Like, they should just call him one-hit wonder. Forget the go-to-sleep stuff. <laughs> Jeff the Killer is the old one-punch man, the original. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now one. He's already talked about it. And finally, our favorite. <laughs> Go ahead, Hannah. Even uh, though Jeff is literally... He is in the middle of a psychotic breakdown. He is going full, full crazy, full serial killer. He's on fire. He remembers to do stop, drop, and roll. Our man. <laughs> Our man. <laughs> all those classes in kindergarten really paid off. Yeah. And that's about it. That's all we have to say. You should read it. It's amazing. It's it's it, read it if you want to laugh. If you read feel like you getting kicked laugh. in the gut continually, if you feel like having your heart stop in one punch, <laughs> if you if you want a twelve year old to pull a knife, if you want the kind of whiplash that comes with a twelve year old pulling a gun on you, read this story. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, so next, uh, Jane the Killer. Literally stupid. Stupid boy. I hate her. She sucks. So, her basic backstory is that her family was all killed by Jeff. And she almost won, but suddenly, divine intervention. And she's saved. And she's made stronger than most humans. And she's invincible and all this <coughs> crap. And what was that? Me coughing? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's just me dying. Don't mind that. Oh, okay. Anyway, so now she decides she's made it her life's goal to kill Jeff. Only sometimes she gets this these primal urges right before she kills him, and she becomes madly in love with him. She she just, she wants to dis seduce him. She goes from being like, yeah, I'm totally going to stab your guts out, to being like, I love you, Jeffy Poo. You're the best thing in the world. And then after that, they're like, she immediately goes back to, I want you dead. Bring me your soul. It's stupid. It's so dumb. It's and then we, we're not even going to mention Nina the killer because, yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. All right. So finally, our last one on the yuck um, list. <laughs> on the yuck column. The Russian sleep experiment. And I'm just going to leave it to she who shall not be named to uh, just explain this one. I, I read this one so many times that I don't know why because I find it so... Like, it's just so gross. It's not even a good type of creepy where it's, like, it has tension and, like, you're on the edge of your seat. No, it's just unsettling because it's disgusting and they say weird stuff. Like, it, ugh. 
Ugh, I don't know why this used to scare me as a kid. Essentially, the story is a bunch of Russians in what I believe if I'm remembering correctly, is, like, some World War II or post-World War II era, is a bunch of Russian exper- uh, experiments. <laughs> a bunch <Experiments>. of Russian... <laughs> a bunch of Russian scientists um, decide to experiment on a bunch of prisoners and see what happens when, basically, when you get extreme sleep deprivation. Which, I don't know why this wasn't immediately answered with you pass out because your body forces you to sleep but let's just assume you're physically incapable of passing out i think they I'm like sure, they gave them some they special get, kind like of they, caffeine or yeah, something yeah like they drug them or something to make them stay they awake. shot espresso directly <laughs> into their veins i have two shots of espresso in you my blood. shall not sleep <laughs> all right but basically essentially what happens because of this is I think they start off relatively fine, but slowly as it goes on, they go insane and they start becoming like, like they start killing each killing other. each other. They start trying to eat each other. They start trying to eat themselves. They stop like, like there's literal there's crap and pee everywhere, and I think they even try to eat the crap and pee, <laughs> and eat their vomit, yum, and, like, yum. their blood, it's just everywhere, there are bodily fluids and stuff everywhere, it's disgusting, uh, they, they're basically half-eaten, again, by themselves, like, it's, it's just gross, it's just gross, and then I think they let, like, they had windows in the room to see what was going on, but they get covered by, like, blood and actual poo, like, they just get <laughs> absolutely covered, and so they have, like, some soldiers, I think, try and go in there, you know, to see what the heck is going on, because they covered the windows. I think they, they either broke or covered if cameras, if there were cameras in there, I don't know. Um, but, long story short, the soldiers get ripped apart. They just get destroyed, get killed. Absolutely. Just dumbs. <laughs> absolutely torn apart. Um, <laughs> yes, the absolute boomers. Um, but one one of them like asks, "What's wrong with them? Like, what the heck is going on? What is wrong with you people?" And one of the uh, prisoners says, "What is it? I guess a pretty famous quote now, but it's like, we are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all." begging to be free at every moment from your deepest animal mind we are what you hide from in your beds every night we are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread are you hungry have a snickers <laughs> like like what is this melodramatic crap <laughs> it's literally like, <laughs> like this sounds like a mm, literal snickers commercial this it honestly does like the this is <laughs> this is like I don't even know, man. This is this is some some whack stuff. This is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, like I don't know. It reminds me of the reason I hated Lord of the Flies. It was because this this overly dramatic and like dark idea that there's a madness residing within all man that only society or sleep or whatever holds back and if we if we don't keep doing this then we'll all go crazy and become monsters like okay weird flex buddy i think you're just a psycho but keep going (laughs) carry on carry on (laughs) so finally we've made it to the yum list Hallelujah. So, we're going to kick this bad boy off with Eyeless Jack. He's missing his eyeballs. Wow. <laughs> I never would have guessed. Ah. <laughs> Is his name Jack? <laughs> what? No, don't no. be crazy. That would be too much of a coincidence. What a kawinky dink. <laughs> anyway. So this is, I don't know why I like this one personally. It's its weird. It's like the opposite of the Russian ex- sleep experiment. I've only read it once, but I, I'm a fan of it for some reason. Um, the origin story, like the whole backstory of Eyeless Jack, fun fact, and the original story that was written about him, like the first story, are two different stories by two different people. One of them is on the creepypasta site, the original story, you know, the real canon story. And the origin story is written by 
judging by the grammar, what I'm assuming is like a 12 year old, an actual 12 year old on Wattpad. So, hey, mommy, that tells you almost everything. What I did today, I wrote about a serial killer that has no eyes and eats people's livers. Oh, really, sweetie? I'm so proud of you. It's their kidneys, you uneducated swipe. Whatever. (laughs) Same difference. Same difference. They can eat the heart for all I care. Eat my big intestine. (laughs) Gosh. Uh, Eat my pancreas. (laughs) (laughs) We're gross. All right. Anyways, the, the original story is... It's really short, first of all, and it's, it's bad. It's real bad. Like, I'm going to come out and say it. It's just, it's not good. There's so much that's weird about it. The main premise of the original story is that it's, it's almost like the first part of the Jeff the Killer story, where it kind of seems like, like it's, it's the victim of one of these crimes just recounting what's happened but it's not in like a police investigation it's just the dude telling you what's going on and what happened um and talking about how like he didn't used to believe in paranormal stuff but now that this horrible thing happened to him he absolutely does so it starts off with the victim mitch kind of being like he he hasn't seen his brother edwin and yes his brother's name is edwin because that's an american name that we use in the 21st century um, hasn't seen his brother in 10 years. And so, like, you think, okay, they, they, they're they adults, they live on their own. I haven't seen each other in 10 years. They're, like, what, in their 20s, 30s-ish? If they're in their 20s, then that means they didn't see each other since they were 10. Okay, so they're in their 30s. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they're, like, they're, they're the parent they're trap. In, <laughs> they're in the general age range of, you know, like, what you classify as an adult. They're, they're adults. They haven't seen each other in 10 years, so, of course, logically, they decide... To move in together. As one does. Yeah, as one does. Like, alright. That's totally normal. Okay, and then at some point, after they've moved in together, um, Mitch kind of like, in the middle of the night, I think he either hears something or something, but he feels something on his face, and then he like falls back asleep, and in the morning he goes downstairs and his brother's like, dude, you have a huge gash on your cheek. Yeah, I just straight up didn't notice a, a huge gash on your cheek. It's merely a flesh wound. Just a paper cut. It's fine. It's no I'm gonna big rub some deal. dirt in it. So they go to the hospital, obviously, because you've got a gash on your cheek. Which I'm assuming if you have a gash that it's like it's bleeding a considerable amount. Like and it's a know, concerning wound because hurting, you went to the hospital. Painful. Yeah, it's in pain. I don't know. Maybe he has a weird condition where he doesn't feel pain that's another creepypasta story for another day my friends um <laughs> oh, no there's too many mm, the 13 year olds there's, there's way too many um so they go to the doctor and the doctors even though they're supposedly just supposed to be checking out a gash somehow they figure out that his his left kidney is just gone and there's like an incision mark on his stomach like they're checking out his cheek and they're like Dude, you're missing your left kidney. Sounds like a punchline to a joke. Like, honestly. <laughs> doctor's like, uh, sir, you're missing your left kidney. Well, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, apparently they have no idea what happened to his left kidney. You know, even though it's gone and it obviously went somewhere. And there's an incision mark on uh, his stomach. I wonder what could have happened. You, you know, I'm almost like it. it was taken out by something but yeah so they're they're completely mystified they're absolutely like astounded they have no idea how this man straight up lost his kidney maybe he wasn't even born with one and that mark's just like a birthmark who knows what a coincidence that would be (laughs) yeah they just never noticed he didn't have a kidney before did they like scan him or something did he get like an x-ray because of this gash on his cheek and they're like oh by the way you're also missing a kidney huh this is really weird also we haven't had you take off your shirt before now because you know we were stitching up your cheek but if you'll lift it up, you'll see an incision mark. <laughs> Was that there before? <laughs> How long have you had that, sir? Oh, that's new. Huh. Okay. So then what happens after all this is they go back home, and he goes to sleep again, and he wakes up in the middle of the night, 
and there's this creepy guy. Like there's, it's it's not even described as a guy. It's like a thing, a person wearing a like a blue mask, like a plain just blue blank face, like mannequin dolls without a face, no facial features, and these black holes in the eyes. And there's not even like, it's not even like black holes for the eyes, like a normal mask. No, there's there's no eyes. It's just darkness, and it's leaking like this icky black goo or tar or something. It's just the sauce. <laughs> mm, I like my eyes saucy. I like my eyes like I like my tacos. Ay, ay. <laughs> but anyways, so he sees the thing pres- presumably either like sitting at the end of the bed or like in his room or even, you know, standing right over his face looking directly at him. Something like that. He's in the vicinity. Anyway, he sees this creepy guy person thing and, you know, his first instinct, uh, like mine would be, you know, as you do, is just to grab his camera and take a picture. Yeah, not run or scream or cry or, or try pray. try and crawl off the bed. You know, kick, beg for mercy. Kick him in the eyes. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> oh, wait. No, his first instinct is to grab a camera and take a picture. So apparently this dude, like, thinks really fast, like, on the fly. Like, he's just on the ball. Doesn't matter that he's looking at a monster or some psycho freak. Like, he he's on it. He knows what to do. I he's mean, like, I don't need to defend myself. I need to take a picture because there's no hope of me defending myself. I need to spread the word and warn people. All of that in, like, less than five seconds. Hashtag about to die. <laughs> Hashtag save yourself. Hashtag can anyone else see my sleep paralysis demon? Ooh. Wait, why can I move? <laughs> Help. Help. <laughs> SOS. Hashtag SOS. Hashtag too late. Hashtag I'm dead now. <laughs> so he manages to then, after taking a picture, the thing, like... Presumably, like, he was just standing, the, per- the person guy, uh, Eyeless Jack, was standing there and just, like, staring at him. And then once Mitch took the picture, that's what set him off, and he tried to attack Mitch. Uh, and he, like, kicked him off and ran downstairs. And then he had the foresight to grab his wallet while he was running for his life. Because, and I quote, he would need the money. Are you going on the run from the law, sir? <laughs> Wait, hello? He just wants to get himself a nice little calm down vodka or something. Vodka. Oh, man. You're, you're, he can't you're even have that because of vodka kidney. after this. Ooh. <laughs> he can't even filter the vodka. He's just going to die. It just sucks. It all goes yeah. straight to your liver. Um, yeah. So, then after that happens, he just, he yeets out of the house um, keep in mind, his brother was still in the house. Yeah. Because this was the middle of the night, so they were both sleeping. Um, so he, he goes to the doctor. I guess he passes out and gets taken to the doctor. I don't know. He ends up in the doctor's office, wakes up, and, like, they, they admit that, like, good news, you're fine. You're gonna be good. Bad news. Your brother was killed by a, and I quote, something like they don't even try and be like like it was the a person in the other movies it was They're an like, animal oh it was probably some psycho or like oh it was just some random animal that a left burglar. a lot of car- carnage like oh you, y'all got like a rabid dog stuck in your house <laughs> no they don't even try to mask it they're like we straight up have no idea what happened but it killed your brother boy i'm straight up struggling how did you live <laughs> You're well, lucky. They phrase it in a good news, bad news scenario. In what universe are, is a doctor going to tell you, good news, you're going to be fine. Bad news, your brother, your brother is dead. I don't like, know, maybe he really hated his brother. Maybe. But it wouldn't be bad news then, so. Um, yeah, so then he, Mitch goes back to their house, even though it should be a crime scene. Like, he just walks back into the house, into the carnage, Sees his brother's corpse and nearly vomits because, yeah, okay, that's pretty realistic. I can see that happening. His brother's corpse shouldn't even be there anymore. Honestly, it should be, like, bagged it up. It should be bagged up. This should be a crime scene. He shouldn't be allowed here. should be here. sent to the autopsy already. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. But then he picks up a small thing, which he shouldn't be able to remove things from this should-be crime scene. Like, what the heck is he doing? Where are the police? This should be Where gone, the too. Law? Like, this should be bagged up, too. Yeah. But... Yeah, so, like, 
what the heck? He picks it up, and he doesn't realize until later, like, by the texture or the smell or anything, that it's half of his missing kidney. Just a nice snack. <sighs> All right. So that, that wraps up that his, um, his original story. His origin story was basically just something about, I think, this kid in college who met this cute girl and got involved in a cult and he got sacrificed to the demon Chernabog and that's how he became Eyeless Jack a cannibal who eats kidneys and doesn't have eyes for some reason because edgelord because edgelord and finally truly. on to our favorite our boy yeah I know <laughs> do you need to leave I probably do we will wrap this up at a later time only it won't feel like a later time to you because you're still watching this You'll, you'll see it in like 0. 0.2 seconds, don't worry. For us, it's going to be a bit longer. Bye. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> All right. That was a long break. Yep, so long for you guys especially. Like a whole five seconds. What are you going to do? You're going to cry? <laughs> wow, you going to leave the video? <laughs> No, you're not. They're still red. They're still red. <laughs> All right. So, we're off to my favorite. Hey, uh, your favorite. Our favorite. Our favorite comrade. <laughs> <laughs> the best. The king of Five <laughs> <laughs> That's a different topic. That's right. Honestly, though. Slenderman. <laughs> the big bad of the creepypasta yeah. world. So, the origin of Slenderman, it may be different than you might think. I don't know what meme I was trying to quote, but I just <laughs> said it wrong. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. It sounded like the, but wait, there's more, but yeah. this is the wrong But wait, there's that. more. Wait a minute. So, it was created, the, the idea of Slenderman was created on June 10th, 2009, a whole 10 years ago. A decade ago, A if you decade. Will. This is an anniversary, almost, <laughs> kind of. Okay, so there was this internet forum called Something Awful, and they had a challenge to create paranormal normal images by Photoshop. I mean, I'm sure if you were to submit a real paranormal image, they wouldn't say no to it, but whatever. Anyway, so this was created by a man, the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Knudsen. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Nudd, son. So, yeah. <laughs> Stop. So, basically, he submitted two black and white photos of small children uh, that were meant to look like older, antique kind of thing. And there was this tall, pale, thin figure in the background wearing a suit with, like, a bunch of arms and stuff. And, like, he posted it with, like, some other, like, texts. That was supposed to sound like newspaper clippings talking about, like, children that were lost and never seen again and how there was pro- how people thought that there was just- there was this monster in the forest or whatever. And that's what he submitted. And ev it, like, immediately just blew up from there. And now you have, like, Slenderman Mythos. He called it the Slenderman, you know, because he's tall and thin. Because he's slender. a skinny boy. We call him Slendy Boy, actually. <laughs> we do. Um... But yeah, and it just, like, people started coming up with different terms and different, like, ideas of what his powers were. And now there's a pretty concrete image, but it didn't always start that way. Basically, people went crazy with the headcanons. Yeah. And actually, what kind of started all the ideas of it, or, like, all that started solidifying what is involved with Slenderman was the video game. It added more lore to it. It added that you're alone in a forest and that you have to collect all these notes, which is where the notes came from. And there's a thing following you, and it's not just, but it's not just following you, it's messing with you. But you should avoid it, but in the end, it's just kind of controlling you almost you're trapped in its game yeah. and you can't escape kind of also thing. the video game i think is the first thing that added the whole static element to slenderman which is a really cool element that honestly you can only really add in a video game or a video i mean no i like to add my static in real life <laughs> shakes anyway. camera 
But unfortunately, Slenderman did not stay on the internet. <laughs> he went to the news, boys! Yes, in 2014, five years ago, I know how to math, I don't know. <laughs> yes, anyway, that's five. There were, there was a 12 year old, um, I'm just assuming because that this is all on the, the internet everywhere, it's fine, but there was a 12, two 12 year olds, Anissa Weyer and Morgan Geyser, and they brought their friend Peyton Lutner into the woods, stabbed her 19 times, and just left her for dead, and they said they, and they said they do it, they did it to sacrifice her to Slenderman so that he would love them. Yeah. <laughs> so, while this story is under the yum category, this specific incident is a yuck. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, not a yuck. Not for our queen Peyton Lutner because she survived, crawled to the road and recovered in the hospital. Like she's alive and she's talked about it, you know, but yeah, luckily nothing like she wasn't killed. Like, luckily. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, it's really fitting that these two girls were 12. Oh, yeah. Which is why we told you all to get out. Because, see, this is what happens. Yeah, never this mind 12-year-olds. You You're not on thin ice. You broke through. Adios. You're drowning. <laughs> anyway. Uh. So, yeah. It, it did see its way into real life, unfortunately. And it did kind of cause some... Fear mongering. A lot. Some fear mongering <laughs> against kind of creepy or horror stories and like vi video, like violence in video games against children because they're like, look what this did to these two people. But the. Never mind that the actual video game does not have any children in it. Like, there's no other characters except Slenderman, and there's no. So there's no violence towards children characters. It's just. These children were evil. Yeah. They were psychotic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh, there was also a movie made about Slenderman in 2016, uh, but it was awful. It sucks. It, like, they based it purely off the original photos, basically. Ignoring years of work from years, people on the internet. Years, an entire network. An entire network. Uh, an entire mythos. mythology system. It was, li it's literally urban mythology. <laughs> And they just yeeted it all out the window. The first time I saw the trailer, I was so disappointed. Because I was like, you could have done so much with this. We haven't even seen the movie. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, have... I'm not even going to waste that kind I mean, of money. I mean, I've all seen all the things saying that it was trash. But, sideways off of the movie, there is some good things you can watch online about Slenderman. One of them being... Marble, Marble Hornets! Hornets. Oh my gosh. That was really cringy. That was really cringy. <laughs> okay. But you know what? I don't care too much. <laughs> now we're here to the sauce. Everything else was just juice at this point. This is the sauce. The true sauce. The real meat. The real meat. The hunk. <laughs> <laughs> the dessert of the whole video. Marble Hornets. If you couldn't tell, I at the very least am a little obsessed. Um... Marble Hornets is a web series on YouTube. Don't know why I added web series. It's a series on YouTube that is, at this point, about eight years old. So it's it's old. Um, it's already completed. The creator has started making a comic recently, which is nice because, hey, more content for a practically dead fan base. Um, but basically, what the story is about is it was the story of like a bunch of friends um that like a bunch of college friends filmed this um student film way back and then a couple of years later one of the guys who worked on it like found a bunch of these old tapes and yes tapes so this really is eight years old this is almost a decade old they had iphone fours yes <laughs> it was so old but had a bunch of tapes left over from this student film from his friend who had been like the director the one actually making it um the student of student film if you would say <laughs> and he he watched them because he was kind of like huh you know, I wonder what's on these. I'll watch them for uh, old time's sake. 
uh, cause his friend had moved away and he hadn't seen heard him from in, him. Yeah. Heard from him, seen from him in a long time. Do you uh, hear any warning signals? Any red flags? Yeah, yeah. Already, already a lot of things. But I mean, at this point in the story, we're still like, I think this is a pretty normal thing, just watching some tapes. Like, if you don't, if there are no red flags for you, then like, you're gonna watch them. Anyway, he watches them, and there's like a bunch of really weird stuff on there. And his friend, the director, um,. I should probably mention names, shouldn't I? Probably the, would help. The guy watching the tapes is Jay, and the director's name is Alex. So Alex he's crazy. Alex Crawfish. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Krilly. Krill? Krill. Krillfish. Acrylic nail? <laughs> eh. We're way off track. Anyway, Alex Crayley was the guy who made the tapes. And he was just doing a bunch of weird things in the tapes. Like, a bunch of the tapes weren't even related to the student film. They weren't, like, some of them were, some of them were actual scenes and, like, behind-the-scenes stuff with the actors and all that. Uh, And some of it was, like, scouting locations for the film. And then some of it was just, like, Alex filming himself himself driving sleeping driving and sleeping and filming around the house as he walked around at night and like like in a paranoid fashion like he was he was really really weirded out about something so that he had to film himself and jay is kind of like you know this is weird i should probably investigate further because I don't understand what's going on. Turns out that was a bad idea. That was the wrong decision, Jay. Yeah. You know those points in a video game where you click a dialogue option and like you can phys- like you can physically feel that that was the wrong choice. Like the whole Telltale games like Kenny will remember that. This is one of those moments. This was not a good decision. Everything went downhill from here. So he starts checking out all these different uh tapes he starts watching them and i think at some point he starts checking out the locations from the films like all the places that they went and stuff and basically he finds a bunch of really weird like weird stuff just starts happening to him and the the center of all this weird stuff as you might have already figured out by what we previously talked about was the Slender Man. They don't call him that in this series, which I don't know if that's an attempt to be original or if it's an attempt for copyright because it's not like this is Disney or anything. But they called him, I believe, the Operator. Like, I don't... I'm pretty sure that's what they called him. Usually they just said that thing. Yeah, they just said that thing. I saw something. (laughs) Yeah, they never really refer to it directly. Like, it's... Which is understandable, because it's not really a person, it's a thing, it's a monster, so I can understand. But yeah, he starts trying to figure out all this different stuff, and in the middle of all this, like, he's he's posting these on YouTube as, like, entries. Like, he's like, hey, I found something weird, I'm gonna post it on YouTube for all of you guys to see, and I'm gonna start checking it out. Um, and so each new entry is, like, a series of him figuring things out and, like, trying to watch more tapes. There's a lot of watching tapes in this. Um, and then I think he starts getting stalked is what happens. And I, I really forget the events of the early, early episodes. Like, I'm having trouble remembering this stuff as much as I am obsessed. But he starts like getting stalked and then this other youtube channel this completely separate youtube channel made by the same people pops up and starts interacting with them like in an attempt to make you know all of this look authentic and real which is really cool and it's very creepy it's it's very creepy this this other channel is um called to the arc which what does that mean who knows who knows but to the arc starts recording these responses and they're they're heavily edited and by heavily edited I mean like stick your foot 
in the editing folder for where whatever program this came from and just like saturate everything and saturate add, make everything. it as loud as you can super loud audio distortion static creepy cryptic messages and oh, yeah. codes and i think some of the cryptic messages might have referred to slenderman as the operator there which yeah. is where it came from I, yeah that's that is but where it came from the characters themselves didn't call him the operator yeah the whole operator which is honestly why i'm not sure if they were referring like if the youtube channel was actually referring to slenderman when they said the operator because it's it's never directly stated by any of the characters it's only said in the videos and even then it's not clear because these messages are cryptic as heck they are so cryptic and they're so creepy and yeah you don't want to watch them at night basically but so he's got this jay has a bunch of weird tapes some person who is stalking him and now this other youtube channel who is responding to his videos in honestly like a very creepy fashion and then oh i don't remember what happens at this point i don't remember what kicks it all off i do know at some point he like, more is creepy being stuff happens there's um a person in a mask oh yeah that is following him that obviously is kind of under slenderman's control or like is working with him and he keeps attacking him and he yeah. keeps seeing him pop up like he's been affected by slenderman in some sort of way because it's it's really creepy. So this is his stalker, and the stalker's mask is also really creepy, and it's it's white, and it's got, like, black, like, very weird black eyebrows and black, like, lipstick lips. Yeah. Um, and the entire fan base that was watching at this point absolutely decided, he's got a mask. You know what we're going to call him? Mask. Masky. <laughs> Um, and if any of you recognize that name, congratulations! He's not a creepy pasta. He's from Marble Hornets. Yeah. Don't confuse the two, please. And he doesn't like cheesecake. Mad. They started that as a fat joke. Yeah, they he started that like. as a joke because the actor was kind of, kind of a little chubs, and it's really disrespectful, and it makes me really upset. Yeah. So, don't. Whatever. <sighs> It'd be but like, yeah, so he his masker now has a face, or rather a mask, and kind of a name. Like I said, the fans gave him that name, so it wasn't mentioned in the actual series. And then after that, after like this stalker guy shows up, Jay also starts like upon you know he's already he has also seen Slenderman at this point, like um like Alex did. And so he started filming himself like Alex did because he's getting paranoid as well. Um, and in, instead of, you know, instead of like stopping looking into all this and like just chilling and backing off, he's like, no, I'm going to die full force and I'm just going to become paranoid like the dude who moved away several years ago. That'll go well. Yeah. Um, and when he does, some really weird stuff happens. Like in one of the videos... Um, like, he has videos set up in his house, and in the middle of the night, he gets up, walks through his, uh, walks through a door, and then the camera in the other room, like, on the other side of the door, at this, the exact same time, doesn't show the door opening at all. Like, he goes, he goes nowhere, basically. And then, a while later, he comes back, and he says he doesn't remember any of this. Basically, he was sleepwalking, and he went into a pocket dimension or something because he did not go into the other room and also in one of these videos in his house Maskey shows up sitting in his room on his dresser staring at him and let me tell As he you sleeps. that was the creepiest thing to see at like 10 at night when I was like a small what was I a freshman a sophomore like when I was Somewhere a small child I mean I was a junior when I watched these <laughs> yeah well, then I would have been, like, a sophomore or something, because I showed them to you, like, over the summer. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I was a small child watching this at night, and that was the creepiest thing I'd seen in a long time. It, it's um, pretty creepy. It, it's, it's scary. It's real creepy. And it I gets mean, you with those audio distortions. It really does. Um, and like, it's there's audio creepy. distortion and video distortion everywhere in these, which I guess they took from the static in the video game. Like, Slenderman... That's what he does to video cameras. He makes them go whack. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, so after this, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna move. But he doesn't move, per se. He just goes to a hotel um, and keeps looking for this information. So he's kind of on the run now, trying to keep away from this stalker dude and figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, and then while he's gone, his apartment burns down. Like, it doesn't burn down, per se, but it gets set on fire. His apartment. And he sees it on the news. So he's like, yeah, I guess I'm not going back. And... Like, he just, he keeps, he gets in touch with Alex eventually, and apparently Alex, at this point, around the same time Jay started looking into all this stuff, Alex's, um, girlfriend and Alex both got attacked by Slenderman. This is causing a a mess of issues just everywhere. Jay should not have done what he did, and it just created a mess, basically. But so Alex comes to Jay and he's like, I need you to help me find my girlfriend Amy because she's missing. I don't remember what happened and I don't know where she is. And so they kind of like, like Alex tries to, like he's asking for help, but he doesn't give Jay his phone number or anything. He doesn't tell him like, okay, I'm going to meet you here at this time, or okay, we're going to do this. He just asks for his help and then kind of, like, never talks to him again, and that's consistently what happens. And Alex also, like, he's an angry boy. He doesn't, he's a bit of a hothead. Like, he's very, he he gets ticked off really easily Has some during all of this stuff. Um... Dang, what happens after that? He just gets angry a yeah, lot. Yeah, he, he does. He gets angry a lot. And at some point, while they're, like, messing around together, supposedly trying to find Amy, um, not having much success, um, another, another stalker shows up. This time wearing, like, a ski mask that has a red like a red frown and red X's for eyes sewn onto it. Um, and if you haven't, he's also wearing a hoodie with the hood pulled up. So obviously by our previous pattern of naming things, this guy is named Hoodie. Because we're not creative for the life of us, but we are very observant. So they now have two stalkers after them, and yeah, they just, they stalk them and they even get, they get full on attacked by Masky and Stalky. Like Alex and Jay, full on get attacked at Masky different points. Masky and Stalky. <laughs> oh my gosh, Masky and Hoodie. <laughs> Is there really a difference though? I mean, that's a pretty accurate name, anyways. I mean, it should just be Stalky One and Stalky Two, Dingus and Mingus. Ah, <laughs> uh, truly, best buds. Anyway. Only they don't like each other. So Alex and Jay get stalked by these guys. They get straight up attacked by them, like, in the woods, at their houses. In the middle of the night, basically. Like, they just keep getting attacked and followed. And Jay starts to, like... Like, they keep finding tapes in the woods where all of this happened. Which is where they've been getting the new source of tapes. Because you keep watching tapes. Like, there are so many tapes in this series. But... Jay, like, at some point, he he gets suspicious of Alex. Rightly so. And he breaks in Alex's house, which is not the smartest thing to do. Also, he's like, I'm sneaking around, and all you hear is just... This is not a stealthy boy. This is not a smart boy. This is just a nosy boy. And he does find some tapes, makes it out, and I, I forgot to mention... He snuck into Alex's house in the middle of the night. Alex wasn't there. Alex ran out to go chase Masky and Hoodie after they, like, I think they they attacked him or, no, they were watching him from his, like, from outside of his house or his apartment or hotel or whatever it was. They were just watching him. And so he went after them because I guess he was done with that. And so Jay's like, I'm going to sneak in and get out before he comes back except he doesn't he has to hide and then sneak out after Alex has come back into his house and the thing is Alex is very aware of this he knows Jay is in his house 
he says so. He doesn't find Jay, but he knows Jay is there, which tells you how stealthy he is. Jay does manage to get out alive, um, and he starts watching tapes, and basically what you find out is that, like, Alex, Alex is just, he's been keeping things from, uh, Jay, which I guess, I mean, if you've watched it, you should really expect, because Alex just acts suspicious, but yeah, so now Jay really doesn't trust him, and... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to speed it up. I'm having trouble thinking about what happens next. I don't know, should we tell them everything that happens? We should tell them to go watch it themselves. Yeah, you know what, we're gonna do that for the sake of runtime. I mean, we've been recording for almost an hour now. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I am not gonna be able to upload this video, oh my gosh. Okay, so basically what happens next is new characters are introduced, crap goes down, and you should really watch it yourselves if you want to find out. Acting is not the best, script and dialogue aren't the best either, but it is genuinely a good series. It's one of the yeah. really good Slender series, so you should definitely check it out, and as evidenced by runtime, I ramble because I'm obsessed. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And don't worry, I'll leave links to, like, the playlist you need to watch it on and, like... With everything in order properly. Yeah. Maybe I should... I'll leave links to, like, all the creepypasta stories we talked about, too, so you can read them and trash them in the comments with us. Or if you don't want to read them, you can still trash them. Honestly. You don't have to know anything. You can just say, this is trash. And we'll be like, yeah, pretty much. Except for Marble Hornets. Because you'll be right. Except for Marble Hornets. That you better great. not trash Marble you Hornets. You trash Marble Hornets and I will... I will I'll come trash to, your I'll house. I'll come to your house and beat you up. <laughs> it won't be... <laughs> Never mind, I shouldn't say that. I'll go to jail for assault. I will do it. Yeah. All right. Well, if you're still here, I'm sorry. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I won't. <laughs>